Oh, hi! Welcome back! It's nice to see everyone. I'm sorry I've been away so long, but as you remember, it's your favorite Uncle Urchin here. Uh, I went through a bit of a move, so hadn't really been ready to, to put out any new content. But Lobster and I are back in action and ready to show off some of my stuff. In our last episode, I misspoke and I said that Frank Miller directed a film called The Shadow. That is incorrect information. The film that I meant to speak of was The Spirit. Frank Miller directed The Spirit. The Shadow is a different movie featuring a different character, and I don't know who directed it, but it does star Alec Baldwin. So if you're a Baldwin fan, go check it out. Uh, star Wars. Big fan. Uh, been a big fan of the property ever since I can remember. My dad and I used to rent uh, Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back on VHS at, <clears throat> excuse me, the two local convenience stores in my area, and yeah, I've been a big fan ever since, you know? I got to see the special edition trilogy in the theaters, and I've gotten to see every other Star Wars film in theaters since. Speaking of the Star Wars films, uh, I, was, I picked up this piece recently. It's one of these uh, commemorative Commemorative Edition Skywalker Saga. So with the release of The Rise of Skywalker, I guess Disney has put out a bunch of these. Disney and Hasbro. Uh, I'm norm normally not a big fan of gold figures, but I am a big fan of Yoda, and I really love the sculpt on this particular piece. Uh, you know, Darth Maul's cool and everything, but... Really, for me, it's all about Yoda, and I even want to get a second pack so that I can bust it open and have a little gold Yoda figure kicking it around. So, really cool piece. Um, it's got some nice packaging, the glossy back with the Phantom Menace uh, imagery on it, and that's that. Moving on, I want to address bootleg. So, a lot of you know bootleg is being uh, rip-offs of some popular property that you're a big fan of, some company just kind of knocking it off. Well, then there's a whole separate world of art bootleg, <clears throat> which is basically tribute to all of these properties we love. So, Retro Gimmick, you can find Retro Gimmick um, on Instagram. That's where I do most of my... Uh, online stuff so I'm sure you can find them on Facebook too but you can find them on Instagram uh, they did some awesome casting of the original Kenner figures so this is uh, you know the original Kenner Darth Vader cast in green to mimic the original Marvel issue one of the comic book and I saw this and I just fell in love um, I like the retro gimmick, the straight up and down figures, you know, that had in the, the 70s and 80s. Um, they're fun, and this artwork is just really cool. And the unique color palette, um, I thought was just totally tops. And then the back has a uh, page pulled from the comic. So, yeah, retro gimmick, very cool. And to accompany this piece, I have this awesome Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi fights alone. Purple cloak, green shirt, uh, red lightsaber. You know, totally cool. Another awesome cover. Uh, and another page pulled from the comic book. When I originally got these pieces, uh, Ben's arm had popped out. Something had gone wrong. Maybe the bubble was too small or something. So Dan, at Retro Gimmick, uh, you know, it, the piece came back a little late. It was during the holiday season, just had some commissions, etc., etc. So as a nice little thank you for being patient, uh, he sent me this really cool little um, resin cast Darth Vader, black and silver, with the original art card. Uh, that is his artwork. It's, again, a, an original art card. Uh, 
we were having a conversation. I told him how much I really liked his his art cards and his style. So if you've got any loose action figures kicking around that you think you would like having, you know, boxed with the original, with a nice uh, a nice bubble and some original art card based on your figure or something like that, uh, Dan can provide that. Uh, jump on his page and you know check out some of his original artwork. It's really cool. Keeping in the Star Wars vein, buddy of mine just hooked me up yesterday with this uh, this action figure case. This is one of those original uh, 1980 Darth Vader cases. I'm not really sure what the various years on these were. I don't think this is one of the first ones. Uh, I think that they, they had another one before this. Maybe it was also Darth. I think there was a C-3PO one at some point as well. Uh, I know that my generation, the 90s, had a Millennium Falcon uh, toy, toy case. I don't know if the original original version did. Um, these were Kenner. I, I think maybe Kenner and Hasbro are somehow owned by the same people, or maybe they just both have licensing. I always liked the Kenner figures better. Uh, in the 90s, when they brought back the, the action figures with, I think it was the Power of the Force, um, Kenner really beefed up their game, and they were a little more posed, not the straight up and down. They are they're really cool. And then in the late 90s, when Hasbro took over for the Phantom Menace, I feel like the, the toys just went downhill a little bit. But anyways, that takes us away from what we're actually talking about, which is this 1980s case. So a buddy of mine swung by my work yesterday and hooked me up with this awesome piece. Uh, all the snaps are still attached to it. Uh, let's crack it open. Boom. Got all the straps by the looks of things. Some of the stickers are worn off. Uh, <laughs> has a little Princess Leia figure. I'm not really sure. Maybe this is from Return of the Jedi or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, it's got the little compartment for the accessories. And yeah, very cool. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But uh, a very, very thoughtful gift, and I'm very appreciative, Rob. Thank you. So, yeah, boom, Star Wars. That takes care of that. Now, back to vintage. I just recently picked up these cool packages from Sewer Vault Toys. They're a couple of vintage Ninja Turtle patches, and they're the same, but as you can see, they're both very different. The colors are different. Uh, the the stitching is a little off on one of them. The, the patterns kind of seems a little wonky. Yeah, they're not really quite the same. This one's a little darker, has kind of some funny eyes. The belt's a little more round. This one, a little lighter, etc., etc. But very cool. Uh, they're seemingly the same from 1989, so that would have been uh, three years into the TV series. The comic book came out in 84. And when you look at the back, as though they do seem the same, but this one says Mike on it. When you look at the patch, it's clearly Raphael. It's, an, it's not Michelangelo. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, uh, I, I like when stuff is messed up. It's fun. Shows that the world's not perfect. Uh, and this one, though unfortunately you can't see it because it has a sticker over it, if you look really hard with your human eye, you can see that it says Raph. So, just kind of interesting. What if I use my eagle eye? What's that mean? <laughs> I just thought, I like that you said your human eye. <laughs> oh, eagle eye! <laughs> <laughs> I bet an eagle eye could see it really well. <laughs> Lobster nuts. <laughs> ah, Super Vault Toys. I've been following them for a while. They were selling the patches, and they are a cool resin artist. Uh, so I took the time to actually like stop and talk to them. Uh, and yesterday, I also got a cool package. So I took the time to do some tape cuts. Stickers. Looks like we got a big one and a little one in there for the card. Very cool. I love vinyl stickers. I'm a big sticker fan. Um, and vinyl stickers are, are a lot of fun because you can stick them and they aren't paper and they hold up. If you remember the Playmates toys, 
Uh, and you remember that the Napoleon Boner Frog figure is pretty gnarly looking, pretty neon. And if you're familiar with, uh, I don't know if it's, I think it's Chinese uh, mythology, there's the little luck frog with the coin in its mouth. Well, Sewer Vault did this really cool custom piece uh, of Napoleon luck frog. So done in the classic paint style of the Napoleon action figure from Playmates. So that's really cool. And instead of having a traditional coin in its mouth, it's got this cool little slice of, or piece of, uh, or whole pie. It's a whole pizza pie with a little turtle on it. This is a cast of a, a pizza that came with the Pizza Face figure, the demented chef from the Playmates, like, early, early 90s, or late 80s series. Boom, boom. There you have it, folks. And I think uh, you can find them at Sewer Vault Toys. And I think the hashtag on this is not Polian Luck Frog. Uh, and John can do it in all kinds of different colors. Again, check out his page. He does a lot of really cool casting um, and some original sculpts as well. So don't be afraid to check that stuff out. I really love this piece. Love the custom toys. Love the love. Uh, and very excited about this piece. Golden Turtle Buddha. Oh, so in love. Look at this. Beautiful little just... Oh, so good. So good. Sewer Vault also has some other pieces. You can get this in all kinds of different colors. There's a really cool like rock with moss version. You can get it in various uh, paint styles and or resin colors. Hit John up, you know, talk to him about it if, if you're down. And said he was gonna be throwing in a little custom piece or a freebie piece, you know. And this little guy seems to be what I have in hand. It's called a Krangleberry. Uh, as you can see, it's a little crang brain head on uh, this funny little, just kind of generic, cutesy body. Crangleberry. Cool. So, yeah, thank you, John, at Sewer Vault Toys for the patch hookups and the, you know, custom pieces. I think they're totally awesome. Very satisfied. Our last original art toy for, for this session of Toy Talk is this awesome <laughs> Michael Orangeo. Um, which is a mashup of the Michelangelo character from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and little Alex from A Clockwork Orange. Uh, really cool figure. Jumbo Nuggetron. <laughs> Jumbo Nuggetron is the artist who did the figure and Putha Locke did the awesome um, original art card. So there's a few artists out there who do these cool playmate style mashups of these figures that we maybe want but didn't know we wanted until they mashed them up for us. Uh, Jumbo Nuggetron's one. Uh, L Dibs is another. And uh, Emo Adventures, E-H-I-M-O, I believe. Uh, these are all really great artists they should also follow. Um, love this cool piece. It's, I believe, a rough one. I missed out on his, on his, like, you know, fancy polished pieces, but I was able to, like, slide in and get one of these, um, these rough pieces that he was using for, for, uh, you know, trying out. It's got a slightly rough, rough paint job, but it's still awesome, and I'm really glad that I was able to snag one before they were all gone completely, so really happy to be owning a, a Jumbo Nuggetron piece. I've also got a bunch of stickers, um, and yeah, just... Just check them out. Really great art toys. Happy to be uh, showing off some people's original art and, and you know, glad that they're in my collection. So that's the end of the Ninja Turtles for now. Uh, let's move on to Super 7 and Reaction. So I'm also a big Troma fan. I mentioned my three favorite properties. Uh, that exists outside of Troma. Troma, for me, is just its own thing. And... You know, I love it outside of time and space and any other property. 
Uh, I had the good fortune of working with Lloyd Kaufman in 2018 on his newest film, uh, which is titled Shakespeare's Shitstorm. You know, I've been a big fan of the Toxic Avenger since I was a little kid through the Playmates toys and through the cartoon that Fred Wolf produced, uh, who also produced the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So there was always this sort of like weird crossover that kind of existed, but then really at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and it's nice to see that, you know, Toxie's getting a little bit of a resurgence and some love these days. So, yeah, uh, I picked up some of these uh, Super 7 and Reaction toys recently. They've got that kind of retro gimmick style that's straight up and down uh, so let's start with Super 7 if I remember correctly Super 7's deal is they're sort of based on the old school Japanese figures so we've got the regular quote unquote movie Toxie that this would be the equivalent of we have the uh, the cartoon version, the Toxic Crusaders version of Toxie, and then we have the cool glow-in-the-dark variant, which is just fun and wonky and cool. And because I'm a nerd, like, I had to get the whole set. I just had to. Whatever. Nerd life happens. Uh, so that's the Super 7 set. And the Toxic Avenger set uh, through Reaction, which is the same company, I guess, and I don't really know the difference except for the fact that I think Super 7, again, is more based on the old school Japanese style, and Reaction, I don't know, is not. Uh, so we have the movie variant of the Toxic Avenger. This one happens to be my favorite. Uh, when you look close, you can see that there's some, like, funny like little bits of red pigmentation through that kind of like brown color which just really brings out this sculpt uh, and it just looks really cool I actually have two of these because I wanted to be able to unbox one and, and stick it around uh, we have the cartoon variant a little bit different than the Super 7 cartoon variant not only the box is a little different but um, you can see there's the green and the pants and it's just a little more authentic to the cartoon itself and my recent acquisition the somewhat recently released uh, acid rain version which is translucent and really cool I also really love this packaging uh, this is the original poster that they had for the toxic Avenger the reason why you can't see Toxie's face is because the original 1984 movie uh, has a sort of old-school horror vibe where after the mutation you don't see his face for a long while there's that payoff towards the end so it's got the original poster and just some totally radical uh, totally radical translucent art uh, on the back we have the uh, a little barrel you can cut out to put your toxie in to, for even more authentic um, toxic funness uh, and on the back of these two, there is the two styles of Toxie masks that you can cut out. And so that is the haul for, for this round. Um, we've done a little bit of, uh, of, of card stuff in the past. So I thought maybe busting out some of these kind of oddball packs. Dick Tracy wax pack. Not so weird. Terrorist attack. Kind of weird. And Desert Storm. Also sort of a weird topic for collector cards. So, uh, yeah, you give us just a second. We're going to go over these. All right. We are back with our Dick Tracy, our Terrorist Attack, and our Desert Storm Wax Packs. So let's start with Dick Tracy. A little more conventional. Deluxe Dick Tracy set in collector's box. This deluxe card set gives you the entire series, 88 Dick Tracy movie card. Oh, cards. that was fun. We're not going to read all that. Wax packs, wax packs. Okay, this is a sticker, but also like a puzzle piece, I guess. I guess that's probably how it works. Um, I could be wrong, but I really like how they made it a point to do everybody's makeup in the Dick Tracy movie. 
uh, to really represent the comic books. It's really funny. You know, Al Pacino, I don't know if a lot of real people realize this, but Al Pacino plays the big baddie in that movie, um, which is funny. I love Al Pacino, and I like the fact that he's the big baddie. I don't remember anybody's names. I'm not, like, super fluent in Dick Tracy, but I do think it's a cool property. Um, I like that old-school gumshoe vibe. Mi Woman of Mystery. Honest Cop in the Slammer. Cop on the Scene. I like that image. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's Al Pacino with a prosthetic on. We gotta deal with Tracy. Oh, Al Pacino. Yeah, that's a cool flick. It's old school 90s. A Warren Beatty plays, plays uh, Dick. You ever see this movie, Lobster? Negative. Do you remember when it came out? No. Well, you miss a no. <laughs> Let's take a look at Al Big Boy Caprice, a.k.a. Al Pacino in makeup. I like it. How do you all feel? Well, I like it. Okay. Dick Tracy. Have some Dick Tracy cards just for fun. Not for any other reason, just for fun. What do you think next? Terrorist attack? Yep. Bring it on. All right, wax packing it. Wax pack. Uh, the Brutal Dictator. Benito Mussolini. <laughs> These are kind of crazy. No more Mermar. How can we stop Qaddafi? These are fun. You Attack really on Liberty great Nation. Several were arrested crossing the Rio Grande. Grand, grande, I guess it's both. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just prior to the celebration for the 100th birthday of this great symbol, they were found to have large amounts of cash and were and names of contacts in New York where they were planning to blow up Our Lady. Um, these are from like 87, so this is very um, propaganda-ish. Guards kill Gandhi. I'm not going to take the time to read all of these, obviously, but they're just kind of crazy. Mad Dog Gaddafi. <laughs> I would love to take the time to read the back of to all of them, but I'm not sure that you guys would want me to. Um, Muhammad Ali Aga, 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 I don't know. A-G-C-A, however you pronounce that. Will it ever end? Will there ever be an end to terrorist attacks? Well... We're not going to go into politics here, but these are pretty crazy cards. We just opened a whole can of worms. That's <laughs> what we opened, Lobster. Holy cow. We're not going to let political beliefs uh, enter into our toy talk. We're only going to acknowledge this as um, a fun little bit of history from 97 with pretty decent artwork and some interesting... Uh, propaganda elements to it. I love propaganda of all types. I just kind of find it an interesting medium. Um, and because I'm not easily brainwashed, uh, it's amusing to me. So, wow, have some propaganda. <laughs> Let's see what Desert Storm has to offer. <laughs> Wax pack in it. Pop it open. So these are tops. This is a tops brand. Um, I think the Dick Tracy ones were too. And uh, Pettymont Candy Company <laughs> released the terrorist attack uh, set. So we got some tops. We got some Pettymont and more tops. All right, Desert Storm. This looks like one of those. Uh, Peel carefully and display proudly. Uh, 300, 320th Field Artillery Motto, Willing and Able. So this is a sticker, uh, and I guess it's the same as the Dick Tracy pack. Like They utilize both sides, so it's a puzzle and a sticker, and when you get all of it, you get the whole image. Um, USS Outlet, Frigate? Taking off in an F 
18. So these are just straightforward. No propaganda here as far as I can tell. <laughs> Hot missile. Uh, checklist. Checklist. And that might be what the Dick Tracy one was earlier. It could have been a checklist. I don't know. I didn't look. CH53 Super Stallion. Look at that stallion. I bet that rides proudly through the skies. Loudly and proudly. CH47 Chinook. Chinook. Shin Thank you. Chinook. Machine guns ready. SH 60B or S or 60B, I don't know, helicopter. I'm not really a military guy, guys. I don't really know a lot about that, so I'm sorry if I'm if I sound like an idiot right now. All right, that was fun. Um I liked Dick Tracy ones a lot just cuz they're kind of silly. Um and boy, would I like to delve a little deeper into these uh propaganda cards. Um yeah. Hmm. Not saying I disagree, not saying I agree, but acknowledging the fact that there's some heavy propaganda going on. Uh, but maybe, maybe we'll deal with that another time. So I just want to give a shout out to uh, all of the artists and toy makers alike that we, uh, that we went over in this particular segment. Retro gimmick with the awesome Star Wars figures based on the old school Marvel comics. Uh, sewer Vault toys with the Napoleon Luck Frog, the Turtle Buddha, the Krangle Berry, Krangle Berry, and for hooking me up with the vintage 1989 Mirage Publishing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Iron on Patches. Uh, give a shout out to Jumbo Nuggetron for the awesome Saturday morning horror show offs. Michael Lorangelo, which is the Clockwork Orange Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle mashup, the cool stickers. Uh, Super Seven in Reaction, who are out of uh, California, San Francisco, I believe. So, still kind of local, a little more mainstream. I mean, I bet a lot of you would probably recognize the packaging and the style of figure. And uh, I guess lastly, we'll give Disney a shout out because they did technically do that gold piece. So, Disney and Hasbro on that one. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks to Tops for the cool wax packs. And what the heck company was it that did these terrorist packs? Petty Mont Candy Company. For the educational cards based on terrorist attacks and America fighting back. So thank you all for, for uh, the wonderful entertainment you have provided. And thank you to Rob for hooking me up with the Princess Leia and the Darth Vader case. So yeah. Alright boys and girls, it was great having you all back. And uh, I look forward to next time. Bye. Bye. to have eight cards but I only count one two three four five six seven Petty Mont Candy Company you owe me a card will it ever end will it ever end that's a good question <laughs> in a trial during 1985 and 86, and these cards came out in 87, so this is like very recent for the time. He was accused of working for representatives of the Soviet Union, but the prosecutors were unable to prove the case. Like most terrorists, his bloodthirsty mission failed, and he will pay for it for the rest of his life. Let this be a lesson to you terrorists out there watching this. Will there ever be an end to terrorist attacks? Probably not, as long as there are terrorists have been around since before the Greek Empire. 
Although Probably the only way terrorism could be eliminated would be through the creation of a totalitarian, totalitarian, totalitarian society, which individuals are kept under surveillance all the time. Sound familiar, Big Brother? <laughs> Obviously, such a life would be more unpleasant than today's world. Perhaps the only response the individual can make to terrorism is to keep faith in God, our country, and well-stocked personal arsenal. <laughs> wow, did you? <laughs> 1987 for you. It's a different date and age. That's just kind of funny that this candy company has these ter terrorist attack cards. It's insane. And they gypped me.